So for me growing up, the smartphone was the it device. It was the big changer, the big thing that my whole world revolved around. And for my kids, that is going to be Optimus Robot from Tesla. Optimus represents the dawn of action-based computing, seamlessly integrating autonomy into daily life. Optimus will be a revolutionary product, and this video is going to examine Optimus as a networked device. As the world moves towards ubiquitous, high bandwidth, low latency internet access, every device, everywhere, can be continuously connected. This connectivity unlocks powerful computing possibilities for Optimus, which we'll explore in this video. Now the ideas I'm going to present to you guys come from Phil on X. Phil writes wonderful articles and he worked at Apple and Rivian, so he's very well equipped to talk about the Optimus network. So let's get into it. So from the start, Optimus will be a connected device. As a fully integrated IoT device, this is any device that can communicate with a cloud, sort of like your vehicle or an appliance or your smartphone. Optimus will have access to internet resources and connectivity to the Tesla cloud. And much like a Tesla vehicle, Optimus will support over-the-air software updates. It will maintain internet connectivity via Wi-Fi or a cellular connection. But uniquely, Optimus will support SpaceX Starlink direct to cell for connectivity. This enables Tesla to operate Optimus globally even in remote areas. Now, ubiquitous internet connectivity unlocks a world of possibilities. As Optimus interacts with its owner, other humans, and its environment, it builds a memory. And this memory is rich, encompassing all conversations, a visual record of its activities, and every movement it makes. Much like in humans, memory will be a key defining element of Optimus. In conversation, Optimus's memory will provide context. For example, if you ask, did you pack my swimsuit? Optimus could respond, yes, it's in your carry-on. You might ask, last week, how many eggs did we use? Optimus could respond, we used 15 eggs in total, 12 for breakfast, and the remaining for a cake that I baked on Thursday. Our weekly consumption on average is 10 eggs. Now, Optimus will have a very large memory because Optimus is connected to the Tesla cloud, allowing it to synchronize its memory state with cloud-based storage. This is more than just a backup, it's a near real-time synchronization of the Tesla Optimus memory state. Now, what's really interesting about this is this enables you to access Tesla Optimus's memory state from your mobile device. This could enable you to have conversations and interactions with Optimus through your phone when Optimus is not even present that further contribute to its memory state. And each Optimus maintains a unique and distinct memory state. Because remember, at any given time, an Optimus is either active and it's operating with its current memory or dormant, waiting to be activated with a memory state. Now, memory states are important for Optimus because a dormant Optimus can be activated using the memory state of another Optimus. This allows seamless transfer of an Optimus's memory between physical units. And this is useful in cases where the original Optimus is unavailable, damaged, or maybe you're traveling. This would allow you to lease an Optimus at your travel destination and restore the memory state that you want in your Optimus. And I anticipate it will take less than one minute to transfer this memory to another Optimus. Now we've talked about how each Optimus has its own memory slate, but there's also the potential for shared memory. The global fleet or a subfleet of Optimus bots can share observational memory. So this doesn't mean that everything that an Optimus bot has ever seen needs to be shared with every other Optimus bot. What we're talking about now is selective memory patterns rather than the entire memory state. We want to be careful with what Optimus shares to the global memory. Right now we're just talking about observational memory, knowledge derived from environmental observations. For instance, each Optimus bot can observe the weather at its station location and share these observations with the collective fleet and other data systems. Or an Optimus bot might track real-time human population density, enabling the data systems to identify peak activity times at locations such as airports, malls, and city streets. Those are just two examples of a case where an Optimus could make a useful observation and then share that observation. Now we have to be careful because Optimus Brain is essentially an AI-based operating system. Its decision-making framework for perception and planning activities is based on a neural network. As such, 
the majority of its computational resources are dedicated to inference. An inference involves processing input data through the AI model to generate actions. So the gist of what I just said is that the majority of Optimus's compute resources is actually just figuring out what it is looking at and what it is being told to do. The neural network model is trained outside of Optimus. It's trained before Optimus is put to work. It's trained in the warehouses at XAI and at Tesla headquarters. So this processing is asymmetric because the model is created using a lot of compute in the cloud after which it is then loaded onto Optimus where inference occurs. So Optimus has a computer on board that downloads the neural network model that was trained on a large data set. And Optimus has a computer on board that has the neural network downloaded, which gives it the tools to take in the world, the input data, and then perform inference and create generative actions. And while inference, what happens when Optimus is in the real world doing actions, is less compute intensive than the training that happens before we put Optimus in the real world, it still requires significant resources. In some cases, on-device inference alone is insufficient. So Optimus can leverage cloud-assisted inference, offloading certain processes to the cloud when network latency is low. This means that not only Optimus bots, but also Tesla vehicles can work together in a distributed inference system. There's gonna be times when Tesla vehicles are not being used, when Optimus bots are not going to be used. So what they can do is lend their compute to the cloud help other bots and vehicles that require inference in that moment that are being used. So as Optimus becomes more advanced, many inference tasks will shift to agentic inference, running asynchronously rather than in real time where network latency is less critical. For example, you might ask Optimus to pay the bills you forgot to pay or schedule your hot yoga appointment. These non-real-time tasks are well suited for distributed inference. So, so far we've discussed the inference in the context of the network connected Optimus, but now we've got to talk about learning. And I've already gone over how the standard AI model training or the learning process happens centrally in the data center. This training process builds a model, which is then downloaded to the device. And once on the device, inference can take place, exercising the model for its intended outcomes. However, Optimus can learn locally, and this learning process effectively builds a skill or a sub-skill. For example, an owner could teach Optimus to crack eggs with one hand, even if it originally required two. Or Optimus could learn how to selectively weed a garden, leaving beneficial plants untouched. These adaptations, essentially refinements of the onboard model, can be transferred to the Tesla cloud for inclusion in the global model. But the key word is can be, because sometimes you'll train Optimus on a skill and you might not want to transfer it to the Tesla cloud where everyone will now learn that skill because it might have taken you a lot of work. For example, when a business purchases or leases Optimus, it will train the bot to perform tasks aligned with its operational needs. Starbucks might deploy Optimus as a barista, training it to prepare various coffee drinks. Now, once trained, a bot's learned skills can be instantly shared with other bots in its workforce, a subset of the global fleet. However, many of these locally acquired skills that you train the Optimus on are considered proprietary. Manufacturing and service business often develop unique techniques for production and service delivery. As a result, they would expect Optimus to share training only within their own fleet, ensuring proprietary knowledge remains confidential. Figure 3B illustrates how this group learning model might work. In the diagram, there are two groups, group A and B. A business operating a bot in group A can train it in a new skill. Once training is complete, the augmented model can be transmitted to the Tesla cloud where the group A model is updated. The updated model is then distributed exclusively to the group A fleet, excluding the bots in group B. If the new skill is marked as proprietary, it remains exclusive to the group A model. However, However, if it is classified as general purpose, it is incorporated into the global model and making it available to all Optimus. So thus far, all actions taken by Optimus are assumed to be individually focused, done by one Optimus bot. But there's power in the network. Connected bots can organize a collective inference and coordinated group actions. Group actions enable Optimus bots to collaborate. 
leveraging their networked intelligence to tackle tasks beyond the capability of a single unit. For example, in a manufacturing environment, multiple Optimus bots can work together on an assembly line, with some handling component placement while others conduct real-time quality inspections. By sharing data and adjusting dynamically, they ensure precision and efficiency while reducing errors and production delays. In a building security scenario, a network of Optimus bots could patrol different areas without redundancy, coordinating their routes to ensure full coverage while sharing real-time alerts about potential security threats. If one bot sees a guy in a a balaclava with a grappling hook, it can immediately notify the other bots. This ability to act as a unified system highlights the strength of collective intelligence. Everybody needs a team. And if Optimus can remotely store, transfer, and share its memory, then it can also extend its inference processing to the cloud and distribute computational tasks across the network. Optimus's learned skills can be shared with a designated fleet or group, facilitating specialized training without compromising proprietary knowledge. And the network connectivity allows Optimus units to coordinate and execute group actions, enabling collaborative efforts that surpass the capabilities of a single unit. And if we go back to the personal computer, that came at an age and time when network ubiquity was essentially non-existent. It wasn't until 1985, with the emergence of the Macintosh office, that the concept of networking entered the consumer consciousness. Then the internet emerged in the early 90s, and consumers everywhere began browsing the World Wide Web. By the mid-2000s, smartphones had begun to take shape. In 2007, Apple introduced the iPhone, debuting as a persistently connected network device relying on and assuming network connectivity. From 2007 to the present, network connectivity has continued to improve and consumers now assume it as a fundamental part of technology. The world expects near network ubiquity and with products like SpaceX Starlink, that ubiquity now extends to every corner of the planet. But Optimus is just different from these products that we've come to know and love. It's the first major new product category to emerge in a world where connectivity is absolute. Unlike smartphones, which we've come to understand as network endpoints, Optimus integrates into the network's very fabric. This marks a pivotal shift where the next big thing isn't just another device, but a new paradigm in which technology and the network is inseparable. And if you don't know, Tesla is a company that is in the best position to execute on humanoid robots at scale. When it comes to their software expertise, their level of compute power and Musk's brilliance in assembling AI talent when it comes to their manufacturing prowess, nobody else is in a better position to capitalize on this ubiquitous network connectivity that spans to every facet of the earth. Actually, the man who got network connectivity to every corner of the earth is the man who is best positioned to benefit from it. Tesla gave us a picture of their production line in their factory of making Optimus bots. Tesla aims to produce around 10 to 12,000 Optimus bots in 2025. And from there, baby, it's just gonna start scaling. So I can't wait to continue to cover it on this channel. Make sure you guys subscribe. And if you guys enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the ideas that Phil laid out, you must be following this man on X. He's putting out a lot of great articles. I'm excited to continue to visualize them, read them and react to them. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.